Dana LaChapelle, and I teach video productions at Toby Johnson Middle School. And uh, I love being part, any part of the SIVAs, love being in the SIVAs, love going to the SIVAs, love judging the SIVAs, love, love seeing all the things that you and your kids create. You guys are amazing. So I'm really happy to be here with you today. And I'm Gail Dessler. I'm a technology integration specialist here in Elk Grove. So one of our, our big goal tonight is you know, the, this session is for teachers, it's for parents, it's for students. But we want you to leave with a toolkit so that no SIVA entry is disqualified based on copyright infringement. My name is Jim Bentley and I'm a teacher here at Folks Ranch. I teach film production in class because it's a great way to integrate writing with researching with reading comprehension. So we've actually done the majority of our filmmaking and writing recently around math videos. So um, I'm just proof that Common Core and writing and filmmaking are not mutually exclusive. In fact, they, they benefit each other. So I'm glad you guys are here tonight. Um, with that being said, we want to present to you tonight some information about uh, where to go to find archival images, uh, where to go to find archival film, where to go to find archival sounds or contemporary sounds, and then how to do that responsibly without breaking copyright. And we also want to slip in a little information about fair use, what that is, and also uh, a little bit about how best to pull resources like this when making a SIVA and how to, like Gail said, not get your video disqualified. So with that said, um, so copyright. I know everybody in here has heard that term before and you probably recognize what we now call the big C, but what actually is the purpose of copyright? Let me give you a second to think about that if you want to turn to the person next to you. But you know, why do we have copyright? What is its purpose? Uh, Ms. LaChapelle, did you have some students Sorry. or people who yes. wanted to talk uh, to that? Copyright is when um, someone takes information from, like, it's like taking someone's property and turning it into their, like, their own property. It's copying someone's idea. Copyright is like taking information and changing it and then like selling it to other people. Okay. Copyright is like stealing someone else's idea so you're like taking away their idea. Copyright is when um, you like take someone else's piece of writing or film and you take it and you just copy it and call it your own. Another way to copyright is paraphrasing. Okay. Thank you. How about any adults? Any adults want to say anything about copyright? Because we, we've got some ideas here. For <laughs> I, think after, I think after that very thorough uh, coverage that nobody else would, needs to jump in there. We, they got it covered. Uh, okay, great. So I own a car dealership, uh, and we sell a lot of used Porsche. And so I used a, a photograph of a Porsche in an ad for my business once. And Porsche didn't like that very much. They sent me a cease and desist letter, mm -hmm. and they told me a little slap on the hand. They say, you do that again, and it'll be a, not as nice of a letter next time. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, good learning lesson there. So actually, what all of you defined and talked about is copyright infringement, because really the purpose of copyright is to promote creativity. <laughs> um, but you need to know about this. It's part of being a 21st century citizen, a digital citizen. And uh, there's another piece we're going to mention a little bit tonight called fair use. So if you are working on that project that you're doing on global warming, and you find this image, and it's just perfect for the PowerPoint that you're going to do inside the four walls of your classroom, you have no copyright issues. That's called fair use for educational purposes. But now at the Common Core, your teachers are going to be helping you write collaboratively online. So that same image that you put in your PowerPoint that's remaining within the four walls of the classroom, if you put it up on um, you know, a social media site, a blog, whatever you're using, your classroom blog, you've gone beyond the four walls of the classroom. And this is where it gets messy. And this is where, as responsible citizens, whether we're students, whether we're teachers, we need to understand um, rights and responsibilities for respecting intellectual property. And one of you used that term, too, copyright. Yeah, and intellectual property is a great term because 
as a teacher, you know what that means. As a kid, we're, we're learning that. And you know, intellectual property is if I take a picture, I created it. If I make a painting, if I make a film, if I write a poem, that's mine, it's my idea, it's my property because it is now in an actual tangible form. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how you, know, you can't copyright an idea, but you can copyright a poem or a film or a picture. So like Ms. Dessler said, it's trying to protect your your property, your things that you made, but it's also in a way trying to promote creativity because mm -hmm. if you make something, you don't want someone else using it. So the Wright brothers couldn't copyright the concept of flight, right. but they could copyright their plane, right? And that's, you know, thank goodness they couldn't copyright flight, mm -hmm. right? Or we'd yeah. still be. Uh, so, so going along with the concept, what we found was uh, Stanford Law, which is, uh, a, you know, you've probably heard of Stanford Law before. Th there are some people that are really interested in copyright and the limits of copyright. And what they've put together is a short mashup of Disney clips. And has anybody seen this before in this room? I know a couple of you. Well, yeah, <laughs> nice, good. Um, if you're an adult and you haven't seen this, this is a great little tool because we're using some Disney products, which are highly copyrighted. And Disney's really good at finding people who are using their things. And, and what Stanford Law did was, is they took some copyrighted things and they used them in a way uh, that's still legal and still creative and transformative and, and it explains what copyright is. So let's watch a little Disney to learn about what copyright is. Have you guys ever seen this before? Because you actually want okay. to read what it says. Now, if you actually look at the wording, <laughs> There's Especially a little play going on because the FBI didn't really say federal law allows citizens to reproduce, <laughs> distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without authorization of the copyright holder. No, the FBI did not say that. Someone is being creative. Someone's being artistic. Someone's having fun and using this in a way that isn't normally seen. This infringement of copyright is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of Criticism, news, reporting, teaching, and parody. So this is a joke. This is a bit of a joke. They're playing with the FBI logo and the letters and such. So let's see what copyright is according to the folks at Stanford Law. This says the following film is not associated with, authorized by, or should be confused with any product produced by these people. but ever so crucial little tiny detail. You'd better be able to pay for that. Copy, right? Permission. We haven't discussed the subject of payment. You can't get something for nothing, you know. But I don't have I'm it. not asking much. Just a token, really a trifle. Hold on. Back up. Are you saying this is about money? I'm sorry, sir. I don't have any money. It's extortion! I prefer the term capitalist. You hear that sound? It's the sound of your freedom fluttering out the window. So, Disney tells us that copyright is a few different things. What, what are some things that we heard here about copyright? How, so, Aiden, if you create a poem or if you create a picture or a painting, who owns the copyright to that? I do. 
it's yours. And if somebody wants to sell it and take the money from your work, your intellectual property, can they legally do that? No. Unless you give them permission to do that, right? Um, yeah. Right. J.K. Rowling writes books and her publisher sells the books for her and that's an arrangement that they've made and it's fine. But if I sell J.K. Rowling's books, I'm breaking copyright. Yeah, now if I have her permission, we're, we're all good, but she's not going to do that for me. We're not that good of friends yet. So there's copyright. Um, one of the things that we want to be careful with, with when we're using films is we don't want to use music that's, you know, pop 40, top 40. Uh, we can't, you know, just go grab clips of, of films and, and put them in there just because we'd like to use them. Those are all protected properties. And I know if you're a teacher, you know that. If you're a student, you're probably learning that. <clears throat> a lot of kids like to use Google Images for things, right? It's very easy. It's a huge search web engine. But, but <laughs> if you don't have the permission to use those images, we're breaking copyright. So I think that naturally leads to what is uh, copyright or what is um, protected by copyright? What can we actually say is not allowable by you? Again, Disney, the, the full film I think is... About 10 minutes. Ten, yeah, we, we broke it up into little chunks, uh, little bits and pieces. But that, that is what Disney's, uh, you know, being used to say what copyright is by Stanford Law. Um, do we have any questions before we go to this real quick? Did you have a question? Yes. What if, um, like, if you go to a website that, that, that doesn't have copyright and you, like, on, like on an iPad where um, if you hit the home button and the, the screen closer at the same time, it takes a picture. So you're taking what, a screenshot of a web page. Yeah, what, what would What's like, that? Happen? Is that copyrighted? Is that, that's a good question. So what's the perp? Well, we're going to look at four questions in a bit. But just understand you know, what Mr. Bentley mentioned earlier. Since the 1980s, if, if you and I sit and talk about a poem you're, you're going to write, that's not copyrighted yet. But if you even write it down on a napkin, once it's been written anywhere, it is automatically copyrighted, even though you didn't go through the copyright procedures. Okay? So your, your own intellectual property, once it's been written, posted somewhere, is copyright protected. So just because you don't see a copyright on a website or an image, um, somebody, if somebody created it, it is copyrighted. And you don't even have to have that little C on it. Right. The second you make it, the second it's born on paper, it's copyrighted. And Lois, if, if you took a picture of somebody else's work and then printed that picture and said, look at what I made, because I took this picture, you're running into copyright issues depending on what it is you took a picture of. So if you take a screenshot, sometimes um, it's, it, you could still be breaking copyright depending on what you just took a screenshot of. So let's see what What's copyright protected? And, and again, Stanford Law is kind of share, sharing some information with us. Well, there's the usual things, like... I'll borrow this one. <laughs> It would be unwise to limit the power of a great idea. So we can only copy right? the fall an idea takes. What? Well, what does that have to do with anything? No, no. He's got a point. <laughs> so ideas are not copyrightable. But when you take that idea and do something with it, that product, that form of your idea is copyrighted. Does that seem reasonable? Yes. Cool. What about things that were copyrighted but now are really old, like, you know, like movies from the 1950s or commercials? Lois, I know, found a 1955 film on the Mayflower. Now, it's not live footage of the Mayflower because that was 1620. However, it's old enough to where you can use it because it's now in the public domain. And we're going to get there later. Dana, here's the so what part, right? Can you speak to this for us? Yes. Uh, so this, this says, when creating a film, you need to determine if an archival image, sound, or film clip is able to be used. And that we're going to show you tonight some very, really wonderful tools of um, where you can go to find things that you're actually allowed to use. Uh, if the work is copyrighted, you need to have, uh, you need permission to use the, 
the work. And we're going to talk briefly about the fair mm -hmm. use, which is kind of what you were touching on over there. And actually, that, um, that's our next slide. Right. Use. <laughs> right. right. Uh, but we are, we, we've got some really fantastic um, resources for you that you'll be able to very clearly see how it is licensed and, and in what capacity you can use it. And we're going to specifically guide you to the things that are best to use in your SIVA entries. And, and for the SIVAs, we need to be clear, um, you have to have permission to use the things that you're using. We cannot argue fair use for a SIVA entry. You cannot grab uh, the theme song from Jaws, or you cannot grab a little montage from Modern Family or whatever show you want to, to put into your SIVA because those are copyrighted. Now you might argue fair use, but the rule for us is really, you need to know the rules of your film festival or film competition. And in the SIVAs, there are no copyrighted things allowed. Without permission. I unless you have permission. Exactly. But you have to have the documentation. And we're going to show you where you can find all those resources, yep. guide to actually make sure that you're crediting so that you're good to go with SIVA entries. And, and did you have a question over? Uh, has anyone pursued the process of getting permission for a song or a video clip or something? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. have they, what's it, the success rate on that? Mm -hmm. It can yeah. be lengthy depending upon who you're trying mm -hmm. to get it from. Although I remember a couple of SIVAs back, there was a student um, San Juan School District who actually got permission, and you know, I'm going to say it was actually from Disney, or you know, but she actually got permission, and she, you know, she obviously started on her project in a timely fashion, decided this is the perfect song, I'm contacting them, and she got permission. And it might have been, the, you know, yes for this specific contest, but for nothing else, or you know, but she wasn't asked to pay either. So yes, she did get permission. And, and the rule then would be really to make sure that you start early. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's two weeks, the deadline is like, oh, this would be a great clip to use. You're probably not going to get it done in two weeks, right? Let's take a look at mm -hmm. what uh, Stanford Law, again, is arguing the essence of what fair use is, if we could. I'm surprised you might run that by me again. Hey, what the heck is fair? Use. This might sound crazy, but they're, they're, um... Limitations? Yeah. On copy, right? <gasps> is it possible? Yes. Copy, right? Maybe broken, but it's... Slippery. <laughs> Can borrow a small amount of a copy, right? Work to gonna let you teach that guy a lesson. To be believed, there has been a child security breach. Direct from the land, right here for you. Very much wish fulfillment. It is my professional opinion that now is the time. But how will I know? If it's a fair use. There are certain rules that demonstrate fair use. Okay, first of all, it's the nature of the work. Borrowed. Second of all, it's the amount you borrowed. Oh, and there is one more thing. It has to be something that doesn't change the, the original works value in the marketplace. Pay attention, everyone. This is important. It's like I always say. Fair use is not a right. But, but. What is it? Fair use is only a legal defensible position. And this is right. not fair. So it's not a right, it's a argument. Fair use is not a right. On a case right. by case. Yeah, case by case basis. So when we look at the ideas of fair use, uh, the U.S. Copyright Office, and, and copyright was created by Article One, Section Eight of the Constitution, giving Congress the power to protect the rights of, of creators and people. Um, just looking briefly, what words jump out quickly to you? I'm trying to help you with my <laughs> underlining and bolding. <laughs> not always clear. Uh, acknowledging does not substitute for obtaining permission. So if you were to use a clip or a song and say, I got this from the website, and here's the artist's name, or I took this from this movie, just because you say where it came from doesn't legally grant you permission, which is important for us to remember. Just because you use it and say where it came from doesn't make it not plagiarism or copyright infringement. Um, when we look at the copyright office website, where it talks about what is or is not 
their use. Again, do you notice words that jump out? You can use somebody's work, little bits of it, for quotation purposes, to review things, to criticize things. So if I'm, I'm an art critic on TV looking at a painting and it's on TV and we're criticizing the painting, that might be reasonable, that might be fair use. If we're out reporting live on uh, some TV program and there is a you know, banner or art piece in the background, a mural, and it just happens to be there. And, and really, when we're leaving the idea of copyright and going into fair use, we're, we're looking at four questions. And those questions are these right here. So you know, for fair use, a word that is sort of the basis of fair use is transform, transformativeness. So the videos that you watch, the clips on copyright fair use, did the Stanford School of Law, did they transform from the original movies? We saw clips of yeah. Aladdin. Was it like we were watching Aladdin or was it like we were watching something else? They took it, repurposed it, and changed the, its, in t its total purpose, right? So that, that's when we talk about fair use, and transformative is a huge piece of that. And then the nature of the material. If you on your blog posted the 50 states, that's not creative. You're not really going to be able, because I also posted them, you're not going to be able to come after me, right? But the more creative material is, like a movie, so, you know, Stanford, that was a bold step they took going, we're taking on, you know, we're going into <laughs> Disney movies and we're going to pull and we're going to transform the original content and totally make a new meaning to what they've done to it. And the amount, just using, and in that piece, right, they were just using like seconds, right, just snippets mm -hmm. pulled from here, there, and everywhere. Okay? And, but the question, the other question, for fair use, it is like a balancing act. So does the cost to the copyright owner, is that greater than the benefit to society? I mean, a judge is going to balance both of those. And I don't think that Stanford, I'm, I'm guessing they didn't get any cease and desist um, letters. I'm guessing they did not decrease the value of any of those Disney movies that were used in the you, making of their... Yeah, you wouldn't watch that Stanford film instead of watching Little Mermaid. Right. If you want to see Little you Mermaid, go, you'll watch go, Little Mermaid. Where did they Mermaid. get these yeah. from? I want to see those movies. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and we, should, we should say that all these images, all these things are on a Google Doc, which we will yeah. show you where so it's... So we're going to give you all the resources yep. you would need. And just to answer your question, though, because we didn't fully answer it about copying, copying chapters of a book, it was because it's out of print and you can no longer get it, you could argue fair use. But if you're just copying those chapters because you don't pay for them, mm -hmm. you don't have an argument. You've, that's copyright infringement. So, you know, these are questions that you just need to stop and ask, do I have the right to use what I'm using? And then what am I using it for? And as Jim mentioned earlier, the purpose of SIVAs is to build student filmmaking skills. So. We've got a question for you now. We've got a film clip, and we want to ask you, is this fair use? Did the creator of this film trailer transform the original work, and it's based on the movie Ben-Hur, which is an Oscar award-winning film. Did they transform it? Did they repurpose it? Are they using it differently than the way the original Ben-Hur movie was intended to be? Are they using as much as they need to do their job? And um, transformative... The amount, the, amount, the purpose. The nature. What's the nature of this? What, what are they trying to do here? Are they trying to show you a dramatic film, or are they trying to have a little fun and be silly and make a parody? So we present to you a movie trailer. And if you haven't seen Ben-Hur, it's on every, every year around Easter time. Yes. <laughs> Peace up. Peace up. At Faro High, Ramses was the biggest player around. No doubt. Yeah. But when the new kid in school... I am a stranger in this strange land. Realized hanging with the in crowd wasn't so easy. He took a stand. Man shall be ruled by law, not by the will of other men. Moses, Moses. Now the battle is on to see who can get the girl, who will rule the school, and if a zero can become a hero. So let the games begin. Creators of Must Love Draws comes a comedy 3,000 years in the making. There are sharp, flawed, treacherous little. Did you hear that? 
Charlton Heston, Hugh Brenner, Sinead O'Connor, and Samuel L. Jackson as Principal Firepush. What happened here was a miracle, and I want you to acknowledge it. Ten things I hate about commandments. We gave you as a slightly censored version because <laughs> Principal Firebush delivers a line that's slightly different, and we, we tweaked the audio for general purposes. So if you want to, sh yes, yeah. yes. So if you want to show this to your students, if you're a teacher, please make sure you go download it, edit out just one little word, or use the link that's here because that's the clean version. Mm -hmm. We would not have want to have anybody um, so surprised. All the sources that we're using tonight, we have for you the right. links in one digital handout. Fair use, was it transformative? Did they change it from the original movie, do you think? Did, did that look like Ben-Hur to you? Did that sound like Ben-Hur? Kids are like, what? Um, Ben-Hur didn't play music like that, guys. No. Um, were they poking fun of things? Were they kind of parody? Uh, was that really Sinead O'Connor? The bald guy? No, not so much. Um, Principal Firebush, who is that talking? Who, do you know who that is? Who is it? Well, that's the voice of God, yes. <laughs> it should be Morgan Freeman then, right? No, um, that's Samuel L. Jackson. He's an actor. So they were, they were, they were playing around having fun. That was a really good, well-timed answer. So that, that is fair. There's an example of fair use, guys. We're taking, making a parody, having fun with something. Really, really good example of fair use. Yes? There was a clip from a Beyonce song that's okay. fairly new. Okay. New music. The rest okay. of the music, I think, was old enough. Okay. But what's the around that particular clip. Was it short so enough? So would, would Beyonce's song be copyrighted? Y yeah. Yes. It's used in what kind of manner? What context? Is this... Is this because it's related to a parody, it's okay. Parody is a really highly protected form of speech. Mm -hmm. um, political speech is a really highly protected form of speech. Comedians can get away with saying a lot of stuff. If you've watched comedians, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's very protected speech. And, th and that's probably the argument for why that would be fair use. That's, that's a good question. That little symbol, does that look familiar? The C, right? That's the copyright symbol, but what does the bar through it mean? It, it's public domain. It's, it's, it's fair to use. If you find a picture of the Mayflower Compact, it's been around since 1620, it's so old that it now belongs to us, we the people, the public. So if it's in the public domain, you can use it. No questions asked. Does that seem reasonable? How else do you know if you can use something? If it's Creative Commons licensed. Looking at the sliding scale at the top, the CC means it's Creative Commons licensed. So let's say Sean makes a painting and he wants to share this with the world. If he puts the little BY symbol, all he's asking you to do is, hey, listen, use my painting. Do whatever you want with it. Just say where you got it from. Attribute, attribution, okay? That is a Creative Commons license with an attribution request on it. Those could be used, and, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, I think we can use those reasonably in a SIBA production because we are allowed to use it. The next level because down. You'll be, able to, you'll be able to cite the source and show mm -hmm. that you have permission to use as long as you cited, you gave attribution. And you that you know that that work mm -hmm. is licensed through that particular Correct. license. The next one then is attribution, the BY, tell who it's by, and then SA stands for share alike, mm -hmm. which means, hey, if, if you get it from me for free, all I ask is that you share it with someone else. So In don't the get same it from way it was created. Yeah, exactly. Don't get it from me and then sell it because that's not what I'm, I'm requesting. The next one down is um, the BY, tell who it's by, and then ND is no derivatives. But teachers, I encourage you to start you know, walking your students through the process of how to attach Creative Commons licensing to their works mm -hmm. that they're going to post online. And all of these logos are available for you to download. For free. Through creativecommons.org. And if it's Creative Commons licensed, you should see these logos near, around, on, or by whatever archival stuff you are finding, be it sounds, songs, or images, or, or film. Um, what's another way that you know you can use something for free? Absolutely guaranteed. If you got permission from the person who made it. So if I make a painting and I allow you to use it, great. Um, properly, you should probably cite who it came from. You should say, you know, when it was made. And there, there are things that we'll talk about toward the end about how you can properly cite your sources. So let's go and start with uh, Google Advanced Search. How many of you guys have used Google Images before? Awesome. You don't really necessarily know about copyright, though, if you go to Google Images, because it gives you a gazillion pictures. So we're going to take you to Google Images briefly. And how many of you are already using Google Advanced Search? 
Well, I hope when you leave here, you will all be. And really, I think Google should rename it and call it Google Basic Search. So, so if you want to do images, you want to search for an image real fast. Uh, so let's we, go with tornadoes. Okay. So we're going to tornadoes. Kind of a nice safe thing, right? And Jim's going to click on images. Okay. Okay. So now I, you know, it's probably beyond count how many images we're getting that are coming up of tornadoes. It's a gazillion. I it's think. a gazillion. Yes. But we don't know if they're copyright free or not, and that would take a heck of a lot of time to go scro uh, scrolling through all of them, right? So Google kind of hides things in plain sight. You could scroll all the way to the bottom and you'd find this link for advanced search, or you can just open that gear and you get a drop down that says advanced search. So on this advanced search, this is totally cool. Everything in here is basic, trust me. And this is where you could tell, you know, I only want images that are black and white. You could do it. So it's like those of you who are teaching Boolean math operators, you can just do it here, text-based. But the part we're going to scroll down to is at the bottom. The very last option, or up a little bit, <laughs> says usage rights. So he's going to open this. Okay, now this is huge. This is going to save you so much time. So this is where you're going to be able to scroll down. And if you want to find something that you can use and even maybe modify. Okay, then he's going to click on that. And one of the things that, that I tell my students on, on a regular basis is we only use free to use or share. Because it's, it's probably the most restrictive search that we can do. And I feel really confident that what we find using that particular uh, limitation is, is usable. So here's a cool picture with a tornado. Question is, can we use it? If we click on it, how do we know we can use it? How did we limit our search? It says images may be subject. Oh, it just says images may be subject. On the bottom, it tells you. Well, so you, you mm -hmm. Images may be subject to copyright. It, it's kind of like they're always going to throw it back to you like it's really your responsibility to know this. But how did we limit our search in good faith right now? What we did is you hit, um, you hit the free to share and modify, and that means you can so we are trying, so we are to, save, trying our best. to save yourself even more time, as you scroll over these, when you go through, it's going to pop up, or at the bottom, it's going to show you, skip the Wikipedia ones, because those are the ones where, you, all the, even though you put in the filters, it may say subject to copyright. Um, look for the uh, Wiki Commons or Flickr. But if Flickr. you click on the image itself, yeah. you, can, you can track, you right. can track yeah. the image. Uh, you can, uh, sorry, not that well, one. That's, the well, the that's, here's the picture. Does it say okay. anything about copyright? But, no, but, uh, but while he's there, one. that's, guys, when you click on the picture, when you view the picture, that is the URL that you're using. I mean, I've had kids share, where the, where'd you find it? Google. Right here. Yeah. But that's that is they the want actual the big old URL. gnarly HTTP blah, blah, yeah. blah, slash, blah, slash, blah, blah. You want all of it. Copy so and paste. Let's go with the tornado picture here. Let's go to the actual page where you find it, because it's on a web page somewhere. Mm -hmm. If we click on the web page, we should be, get, we should, we should be able to get a clear idea. Now, again, we're at Wikipedia, right? Yeah. But look at the picture. If we zoom in a little bit, uh, air circulation in a supercell thunderstorm, really cool. If we click on the picture, it's going to take us somewhere. And it hopefully should give us a clue whether or not we can use this. So if it's on Wikipedia, it's probably not good. Well, well not if you're in a hurry, use the Wiki Commons. You've got to get this or far. Flicker, or so, the Flickr So ones. this yeah. is what I tell my students. If you're using someone else's work, but, Prepare to put a lot of your own work into it and, and defining it and making sure that you're allowed to use it. This is not a quick thing. Um, and they have to dig and dig and dig all the way until they can find the words that say they're allowed to use but it. This is the one you wanted, it paid off. Right. You, it's public domain. And if they can't find it, then they can't use it. And that's just simple as that. So, Google Advanced Search. Could we try to go back and look for video with tornadoes, Gail? Could we, could we limit our search with videos? Yeah. If you just go, just go to the web in general, and then go to the web in general, up to web, and now go to advanced search, and let's see. Yeah, go to advanced go. search, and now go down, go up and see, because um, this, this is where you can say, well, I want a PowerPoint, or I want an image, or I want so tell the file type. So Google Earth, or, or All these life. different types yeah. of, right? I don't see Well, it has movies. Flash. It has Flash or Google, AVI um, is Google right Earth stuff. Yeah. There? yeah. I don't see AVI. Yeah. yeah. Any format? No. But it's probably, it's probably the most powerful tool for you for, for 
images for it's, finding it's the, the copyright. It's the fastest way because it searches so many different places um, that m these images might be stored. So there's, there's Google Images Advanced. And, and I, I still want to explore a little more for the video mm -hmm. part, too. But it's not Google. It's Google Advanced Search, right? Right. And we can filter what we're finding it's based Google, on. Google, you'll be overwhelmed. And you still have to dig all the way down until you can find the license that proves that you're allowed to use mm -hmm. it. That's the most critical part. So let's go to another search. And this is with Creative Commons, creativecommons.org. If we go to Creative Commons and we want to find resources, this is a little bit easier to search with, I think, in terms of video versus film versus where you go to. We're going to go to Explore, and we're going to go to Find CC, or Creative Commons Licensed Works. Again, let's go with Tornadoes. And what I suggest you do is when you search Make sure that we click off of commercial purposes because we're not doing SIVAs to make money. And we do want to be able to modify, adapt, or build upon. When I scroll back a little bit, I've got these different websites that I can search through. We can search through Google Images, Wikimedia Commons, uh, YouTube. Let's go to YouTube for a second. These should be videos that are Creative Commons licensed. Your job now is to figure out what kind of license it has. Um, high speed imagery of Oklahoma tornadoes. If we click mm -hmm. this, we're going to see a video pop up. But the question is, can we use it? Well, let's click on show more. And a hint, you know, like a hint is if it looks like a government agency might have filmed it, it's automatically public domain. Oh yeah, NOAA visualizations. That's the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. That is a federal government agency, which means you're going to be able to use that. It's a public domain thing. It's and still I'm, up though, so it's shut down. Yeah. But can you, yeah. can, you, can, you find, can you find the About. words? Oh, here we go. Look at this. <laughs> creative, creative Commons Attribution License. Reuse allowed. Now, if you want to confirm what that really means, click it. That's right, it's still working. <laughs> Does that mean there's no tornadoes happening right now? <laughs> They're going to give you a little disclaimer about ultimately it's your job to make sure that it's copyright free. So they're going to throw it back on you again. But in good faith, we've searched through Creative Commons. We looked for things that we could modify or build upon. In good faith, you could argue, you know what, I did my job. I've confirmed. I've clicked more than two or three yes. times. We've done and and students have to be detectives. They have to click. They have to read more. They have to find, uh, find the words that say they can use it. Again, we're at Creative Commons. Find CC license works. If you don't want to check YouTube, and in fact, students here at our school, we have filters on the YouTube that won't allow you necessarily to go out unless it's a clean search and it's, it's messy. But let's go back to tornadoes again. And instead of looking for film, why don't we look for images, pictures? Wikimedia Commons is a great tool. And we're going to find quite a few pictures of tornadoes here. Here's an F5 tornado. The question is, can we use it? Well, how do we find out? We click. We're going to scroll down and see if we can find some sort of licensing information. So, hmm. Well, it's either at the bottom or at the side. It's Let's telling see. me the date it was taken, information about the picture. Oh, here's licensing stuff. Okay. Oh, look, Creative Commons. Attribution, which means I have to say who took the picture, and I have to share it. Jim, Whatever can you, I create. Can you scroll back up? Because in addition, um, when you're, you're finding the licensing, but you also need to find, if you can, um, information about the image. Uh, did the photographer name this image? Um, who is the photographer? Here's the photographer, um, Justin so Hobson. Those are all things that we're going to teach you in the very last session tonight uh, of all those bits and pieces to collect and how we collect them with students mm -hmm. to make it the easiest for them to transfer them successfully to their credits. I think you can probably figure out that if you want to search a different resource, you can click on a different resource, right? right? So let's leave Creative Commons for a moment and let's go back, if we could, to the Internet Archives. And this is a gold mine. This is one of my new favorite places in the world to go. National Archives is a government agency. The Internet Archive is their 501c3 spinoff. So if you need old archival film, if you want commercials from the 1950s, if you want old TV shows, if you go to Internet Archive, you can click in their search box. Um, I'm going to search, actually, let's go Mayflower Compact this time. 
because I know one of my students is doing a Mayflower Compact or Mayflower Compact documentary. Instead of all media types, we can actually select what we want to go for. Uh, we could try cartoons, but why don't we try moving images? And that's going to be the bigger category. Do you notice how animations are below moving images? And computer and technology is below moving images? Those are kind of subsets of moving images. If we click on moving images and go, like Dominic said, thank you, we're going to find that we have this little icon, this little film icon. And it looks like there's two things that we could get right here. Uh, oh yeah, one through two. If we click on The Pilgrims from Encyclopedia Britannica, what year? 1955. Here's a good old fashioned movie about the pilgrims. Now the question is, can you use it? Well, I don't see anything about Creative Commons. Do you guys? Where is this film located? The Prelinger Archives. If we go to the Prelinger Archives, and again, it's going to take multiple clicks. This is Welcome to the Prelinger Archives, a lot of text. Oh, but look, rights. Oh, look, you're warmly encouraged to download, <laughs> use, and reproduce these films. Not just use them, you're warmly encouraged, please. You are warmly encouraged to share, exchange, redistribute, transfer, copy these images especially encouraged to do so for free. Does that mean you can't sell it? No, well, it sounds like they'd like you to do it for free, but you know, yeah. it takes a couple clicks and you've got your answer. So Internet Archives, great little resource. Um, you can download these in a variety of different ways and we can answer those kinds of questions uh, for you in a minute. Um, in addition to moving images, we can go to still images or animations and cartoons. We might find some car oh, no cartoons there, would sorry. Students, would you recommend students printing all of their copyright things just to have them so that it's We're going to show you how to copy and paste them and collect them all in one spot. Okay. Electronically yeah. without using resources okay, that we have so few okay. of. <laughs> so the Internet Archives is the nonprofit branch of the National Archives. If we go to the Library of Congress, if you look at the top, and this, this Library of Congress, it's so easy to get lost in. I, I've been lost for days before um, and had my daughter bring me food. I, I, I couldn't get out. It was, it's a labyrinth. But what I will say is if we want to search the Library of Congress, and maybe we can go Mayflower Compact again, just for giggles. What kind of format do we want to look for? Well, audio recordings. We're not going to hear the pilgrims reading it, but we will possibly hear other people talking about it. Um, films and video. Look at that. We also have photos, prints, and drawings. Let's click on photos, prints, and drawings and click go. You're going to find more resources here. Piece of art. Can we use it? I don't know. You'd have to click and do a little bit of searching around. Obtaining copies, access to original. Here's where you guys can jump in and say anything. If you see the license before I do, please. Oh, that's nice. No known restrictions on publication. I might want to click one or two more times just to totally confirm that I don't have somebody hunting me down. But again, it's going to take a little diligence on your part and your students' part. And if your students are going to use images like this, you're going to want to be able to trace back where'd that come from. And that actually comes to the, the logging part, the recording part. We've got an inventory that you can use where kids can log their data as they go. Um, there is the Library of Congress. Let's go to the National Archives. They have this wonderful little advanced search, uh, OPA, Online Public Access, right? You can start OPA. dancing, yeah. OPA, OPA. Um, <laughs> this is a great tool. <laughs> I know that uh, two years ago I had students working on a project for the Japanese internment and it was a documentary project. So you have to think a little bit like an archivist. It's not nearly as friendly as Google. You can't just say, how do you, um, you know, tie your shoes? Not that you would search here for that, but you have to really think library technician, archivist. So I know that the, the process of interning Japanese was called the Japanese relocation. So I'm going to type in Japanese relocation. Where do you want to search? All of these. Presidential libraries, the archives, 
the records, National Administration, the Records Administration, all of these things you can leave checked. Search request timeout, no. But I will say there's one little box that's so discreet, type of archival materials. If you scroll down one below moving images, you'll see photographs and other. Or you can go moving images. Let's go moving images and then scroll down to search. Twenty-six results for Japanese relocation type of archival materials. This is description only. View all descriptions. So that sounds like it's not online. Now, if we lived in College Park, Maryland, we could just drive over and pick these up. So you might have to do a little bit more searching because they're not, uh, everything that they have is not on, online. Uh, they've got billions of documents. But I can click the, the website and track this down. Um, yeah, it may not be available online. So we've kind of hit a dead end there. We can still keep looking, but instead of actually going for moving images, let's go, if we could, to the still images. Let's try that. Photographs and other materials. And again, our search is uh, Japanese relocation. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Come back down and search. Wow, 1,591 pictures. That'll do. How many of you guys have seen this picture of Manzanar? It's a pretty, pretty famous picture. For the students in the room, if you haven't seen it yet, you'll, you'll see it in high school for sure. Can we use it? Um, well, who took the picture? Department of the Interior, if you can read that really well. Uh, is the Department of the Interior a, hello, is the Department of Interior a government agency? Yeah. yeah, which means if it's made by the government, it is automatically public domain. If you were to click on the creator, would it then take you there? Sorry? If you were to click on the creator, would it then take you possibly more? Creators. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's click. So full organization authority record. Um, can you see why reading comprehension is so important? <laughs> There's stuff we could read. I, I know safely, though, this is a government-created document. You're, you're safe to use it. So what we've got are these resources. And we really want to turn it over to you guys. Um, we have three sources here for music. Do we want to go through these quickly? Sure. OK. So uh, Jamendo, How many, has anybody heard of Jamendo before? Yeah, it's familiar. It's, it's music online. Um, there is a pro version, and then there is the non-pro version. The pro is a, is a new aspect mm -hmm. uh, to Jamendo. Jamendo calls itself the Creative Commons source uh, for music online. And you're not going to find any of the music uh, by artists that are popular that you already know. Uh, but this was originally created by a lot of musicians to make their music available without the copyright. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of great music on there and there's a lot of awful music on there so it takes it takes some time to find it um, and one of the things that I love is when you click in the bubble um, it gives you it, it allows you to search by genres or by mood mm -hmm. and that's great for filmmakers because that helps us really narrow down the search process and like getting lost in the National Archives um, you can get lost in this and just go oh I love this song I love that song I love this song um, and a lot of them uh, are free for download for your own personal use. And most of them, or I should say a good number of them, are available with Creative Commons licensing. But they now have these new little green tags um, that say pro, because some of the bands are now saying, if you're going to use this commercially, we want you to, to pay us. Um, they've always allowed you to pay if you felt motivated to contribute to them, uh, to the artist in some way. And it's always allowed you to donate. So here's um, your pro. But the, the, the pro tag says, you know, this, this needs to be licensed to be used for commercial purposes. And even though we're not making money with our movies at the SIVAs, we're going to completely avoid the pro license because that's what's going to give us um, the cleanest, most secure knowledge that we are using work that we're allowed to use. But we're not just going to say it doesn't have a pro tag so we can use it. We still have to click and dig and find the words that say that we're allowed to use this uh, for attribution or whatever their terms are. So in the bubble, I chose cello. 
cello music seems pretty safe, hopefully. Um, some of the lyrics, some of the songs are, are not G-rated. So right. just know right. that there are things on there that you may want to avoid. Uh, if I go to cello, and I'm going to go to the one that's not the pro, I'm going to click on Seis Hermanos. It will take me to a web page where I could listen to the song, and I'm not going to listen to it now. But I can look about the track and see that it's, it's uh, jazz, it's piano, it's cello. There's reviews, if, if there were reviews here. If I scroll down, though, oh, look at that. And that's what you're looking for. You can copy, um, distribute, advertise, and play. For the teachers in the room, um, I, I'm sure that you already say the same thing, but I really advise my kids not to use uh, music with lyrics um, unless there's a really compelling reason. And they, if they happen to find something that the lyrics support, uh, the theme of their movie, um, that's a rare find. Uh, but if there's conversation, if there's dialogue or a voiceover in your movie, lyrics are just going to compete with that and, and, and dilute your message. And I also feel better as a teacher knowing that the majority of my kids are listening to instrumental music uh, versus some of the things. Uh, this is not filtered even in the district. Um, it's, it's not filtered. So there are some categories in the genres that I tell my kids straight up, you, you know, we're not going to go there. And uh, we try to direct them in a productive search. Uh, and again, they've got to find their way all the way down to the bottom uh, to, to show that they can use that particular piece. That song that you just had, that, uh, all right. um, it says do not use album for commercial. So even though it wasn't a pro, this one still says not commercial use. So we would not use this song in the SIVAs, correct? No, no. No, SIVAs are not commercial. Sivas, but don't use it in something you're going to sell. Okay. So if right. your students are doing a project and they're getting paid for it, mm -hmm. okay. you wouldn't want to use this song. Okay. Right. There's another website that is also on the Google presentation, which is online, which you guys will have access to. It's Moby Gratis. Do you want if to speak you, to this, mm -hmm. Gil? And if you know the artist Moby, he's really into the whole Creative Commons uh, concept, but he also is a music musician and makes his living that way. But he's put out a whole lot of his works in entirety or in pieces with the invitation for you to use them. And the way this works, and it's called Moby Gratis, and it's MobyGratis.com. And again, we have the links for you. We'll show you. When you go to his catalog, very similar to the Gemendo, I can come over here to the, to the right-hand side, and I can go, OK, mood. I want something that is blissful. Okay, and I could you know, tell to search. I could tell you know, and I get more specific. Um, and what it'll do is it'll give me some tracks that I can listen to, and then if I like it, you know, I can download it. And then the way it works is you ask. He has a little permission form. This is all online. Little permission form. You send it in. I had some eighth graders a while ago that were doing a project actually on the internment, and they were using Photo Story Three. They didn't like their music choice in there. They wanted something a little more somber in this case. So they, um, you know, we applied to Moby. It takes a couple of days, and we got to really, you know, love your project. Yes, you have permission. And why don't you think about coming back and posting it on our blog too? So, you know, this is contact with an artist um, and practice. You know, flexing your your fair use muscles and, and getting it's out really there. really rewarding for kids to to make that mm -hmm. contact and get and get a reply. Even if, it's, even if it's a negative reply, they've heard back and they've gone through the process. And so it's a, it's a really good, good thing for them to do. There's a welcome message. Welcome, guys. We're glad you're here. Click here to access tonight's Google Doc. What you're going to find are all the links we've been showing you tonight. Internet Archive, Library of Congress. So one of you asked, a couple of you asked about how do you record stuff so that you can find it later? So if you scroll down, the last chunk there on the right-hand side says student templates for building um, copyright compliant projects. And if you go down, you're going to find um, some awesome resources, some from Mr. Bentley, some from Ms. LaChapelle. But under the keeping track of your sources, and it's going to open at the bottom, it's going to open as a Word doc. This is an excellent way for your students to keep track of things on a document. Because if they handwrite those URLs, uh, there's a very good chance that they're not going to get them right. Uh, and it seems like a terrible waste of time. Um, and so we can, if we're using a, a picture of a tornado that does not have a title, uh, I ask my students to describe it so that they will be able to tell which, which source that they're using. Uh, here they write the photographer's name or the author. 
The type of work is a real quick, it's a picture, it's a movie, it's a what have you, a sound file. Uh, and then here is where you, they can copy and paste the big old gnarly URL that they're supposed to, supposed to use. If it doesn't stretch the box or make this look messy, they're not getting the right one. Because <laughs> Google.com will fit in there, but I don't want Google.com in there. I want the one that makes the box stretch and, and, and resize. Um, this is where they've tracked down the exact license that they're allowed to use. And this is where they can copy and paste uh, the license name, the, the Creative Commons 2.0 or the public domain, that sort of thing there. And then um, if you have kids that are using things on flash drives or saving them to network folders or what have you, it's a really good idea for your kids to write where they just saved that. Because we hate to go through all of this work and then not be able to find our, our document. So one of the other things I'd, I'd like to show you guys um, that's uh, on this site if I can find the right one. Oh, good, I did. Um, I made two documents here. One is a credits must contain, and um, it's another Word document, and that's for you to look at. I, this is what I use with my students. Um, and I tell my students and teachers, I would like you to hear me say that I tell my students that any one of these areas that does not apply is left out. Uh, of their credits. But a lot of these items will ap apply. So we do a film produced by, directed by, written by, uh, the cast, uh, the crew. If, you're, if your kids don't have a separate crew, then they would just not, they would just omit that part in their credits. But the part to me that's golden is right down here. When they cite their music, they have to include the title of the song, they have to include uh, the name of the band or the artist that recorded the song, the exact, what I call the gnarly URL, where they got it, um, and the license type that allows them to use this. And um, some people get fancy and they add the um, Creative Commons logos as part of their credit. Um, it just depends on how much time your kids have and how uh, artistic they want to be all the way to the end. But they have to have the data in here as far as I'm concerned. Um, their photographs, it's the same thing. If the photograph does not have a title, they have to very accurately describe what that photograph looks like so that um, anyone who is checking to see that these are legally used can I clearly identify which photo is being spoken about or referred to. So uh, again, it has the name of the photographer, uh, the URL where the work is hosted, and uh, the license that allows you to use it. So this is what I have. And then just to try to help make it look uh, a little bit easier for kids, um, I made a, a sample that this is uh, this is a sample credits that came uh, from one of my kids' projects. So um, they have, you know, that it's been most of those items, but they don't have a crew and they, they left some of those things out. Uh, but they show very clearly that they used um, this marine pollution photograph and they have all the proper information for two different photographs. And you'll see that it's, it's, it's big. Uh, there's a lot of text. Uh, credits don't count in your PSA time, thank goodness. Uh, credits uh, are the end of your movie. They're a legal requirement as far as I'm concerned, and I think that's why we're here tonight. Uh, we don't care how long it takes your credits to roll. Uh, we want you to do a really thorough job and make sure that you are accurately uh, using and reporting your ability to use the items in your movies.